and Floy Models Daily Vlog. Here we are on Friday the 27th of May 2016 and busy old day, lots of things. I've been doing reviews. Um, I've got to review this guy, but we'll talk about him a bit later. But basically the day started like this. Okay, good morning. Thank you for all the feedback on uh, last night's show. Thank you for the feedback on the Thompson. What are we looking at even there? Oh, it's me trying to play camera angles. Um, it's nice to do something a little bit different and that's what I like about this hobby is that you can be, you know, like I was to be honest, an aviation modeler. Love my World War II, love my um, Cold War jets um, and then I love my naval aircraft especially. Um, but this year and last year it was, I wouldn't say getting boring but I wanted to spread my wings a little bit and do different things. So we like doing airliners. First airliner we've properly done. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Doing things like the bike, the car, we've done obviously the Star Wars sci-fi stuff, stuff like that. And it's great because you learn so many different techniques. Glossing especially, you know, a good example on that. I've had loads of feedback saying, how did you get the gloss of glossy? Normally for non-members, because you guys, as you know, know exactly how I do it. But generally it is that thing of like, you know, you've learned something and then you get the sort of wow factor with it and people are like, crikey, that's incredible. How did you get that effect and everything else? Uh, and it's something that you've picked up. And a lot of people think that me doing this, and I've been doing this job now full time as my, you know, my actual income for over 20 years. Um, and it is that thing that people assume you know everything. Honestly, I know nothing, Mr. Faulty. Uh, but literally, it is that thing where you sort of, you go along and you try a new technique and perhaps it doesn't work for you and everything else. And then at some point you get the light bulb moment and it clicks. And what I find is, is that it all went back a few years ago now with the wing that wings, because obviously I never did um, World War One aircraft, so I hate rigging. Um, and then I was using elastic knitting in thread and super glue and it was a doddle. And all of a sudden you think, all those years I've been putting off doing things like that because I thought it was gonna be a problem area, actually isn't too much of a problem at all. And then obviously, Dan in here with glossing and stuff like that the Ducati when we did the bike I know I'll harp on about it but for me it was one of those things I would never do something like it because I'm not very good at glossing I always had orange peel various problems with it you know and everything else like that now I'd be happy to do anything with a high gloss finish because I know how to do it I know where I was going wrong okay and I found something that works for me now that's not to say it's going to work for everybody but it certainly worked for me and that's what I love about this hobby is that you can say to yourself right okay well look I'm going to build this particular model so I can have a go at this particular type of weathering finish, high gloss, high dirt, high grime, chippy, rusty, falling apart, brand new look, whatever you want to do with your model and that is a thing to it. So you might think to yourself, well look I'm not very good at camo work and all the rest of it um, and I don't like doing sort of old World War II stuff so I might do what we're going to review in a minute. Okay so we're going to do something that's in a full technically wrap around camo but you've got nice sides, it's in special markings so we have got that very nice black tail on this particular one, nice markings, a different type of aircraft as well uh, and things like that so generally it is just that thing of perhaps pushing yourself in a direction that normally you wouldn't go um, but you know you sort of okay I'm gonna give it a whirl and then you can come away and when you finish the model and you put it down why am I looking at nothing my editing's terrible today uh, but yeah you know you're into something like this perhaps where the feedback's been incredible over something I think is pretty mediocre. I cocked up completely the gloss work on it and it's got bits in it. But looking at it, it looks great, okay? And everybody who comes in here and sees it, they're like, oh, wow. And to me, it's just an airliner. I, you know, I do other things which are like highly weathered and opened up and that that I get more excited about. But it's amazing, especially from non-modelers, what they see as of the big wow factor uh, and what they don't. Like in here, when people come in the studio, normally the first thing they'll spot is the Star Destroyer and the Space Shuttle just because they're huge and nobody's seen anything that big normally just being around uh, normal shops and in the hobby and stuff like that because they are supersized models. So you have that big wow impression. But to me, some of the smaller stuff is more wow to me, you know, so it is that thing. But I'm a great believer in pushing yourself, taking on new challenges, learning new things, um, keeping the mind active. Uh, and it is that thing a lot of people also say to me about like your mojo, how do you get up every single day? And I do do this seven days a week come down here and look so bloody excited on camera and all the rest of it. Generally, I've never got bored of it because if I did slightly get bored of it, I would probably just move genres a little bit. So perhaps we'll move into a little bit of sci-fi, we'll move into a bit of armor, we'll move into a naval subject, you know, civilian stuff. There's always something you can sort of, you know, move into. And that is one of the nice things about the hobby, that it does lend yourself to anything. And obviously it's not just this part of the hobby as well. I'm looking at it here, I'm desperate to show you guys, but I'm not allowed at the moment. But I've got something down here that I'm so impressed with, uh, and it's like, right, okay, it's um, it's something new. It's a new, 
learning a new skill, totally different than stuff we've done before, but we're taking everything we do as modelers and putting it into um, an object or a prop. This is a movie prop, one-to-one -one scale that I'm looking at. Um, you know, uh, and it is that thing of like, you can say, right, okay, well, all those modeling things, all that filling, sanding, you know, painting, weathering, and all those things, I'm now used onto something which isn't technically a model, it's a movie prop, it's one-to-one -one scale. Uh, it's big, it's bulky, but it looks very realistic. Okay, and that is the whole point to it, is that you can do something like that um, and, you know, Though it technically it's not modeling, it is modeling because all the tools and techniques and everything you've learned over the last couple of years, you use on that particular project. And that is the nice thing about it. So it may be anything from scratch building to dioramas to, you know, figure painting to, you know, gloss work to heavy weathering to chipping, armor, aircraft, ships, anything. That's the thing. And that's what I'm trying to get over here is that it is this big cauldron of different ideas, projects, stuff like that. And it's amazing how modeling and painting and weathering has its roots, um, you know, down of what we do here, perhaps in a small scale, perhaps you only build 170 second scale aircraft and stuff like that. You can take what you've learned there and put it into a movie prop, one to one scale, full size thing, because all you're doing is upscaling, okay? And a lot of people say, oh, it's scale effects and various things like that. I won't worry about it. At the end of the day, it's still the same techniques, you're just doing it on a lot bigger scale. Anyway, I'm waffling this morning. I don't know why I'm on a run. For me, what we have is we are going to be looking at, if I take you on a slow walk around. Oh, I must just point this out. I'm amazed by this. Look, I know the lights aren't on here, but the Halifax fits in my cabinet. Who knew? Okay, so this is up for review this morning. Glare, terrible glare. This is going to be my entry into the um, Japanese uh, group build coming up. Something a little different. So obviously it's the Mitsubishi F1, which is, we all know is like the love child of a Jaguar and something else. Okay, um, but it's a nice one because as I say, this is what I was on about. Wraparound camo, different types of camo that I'm not used to dealing with and everything else like that. Plus the fact we've got a full color tail, drop tank, things like that. So again, very excited about doing that one. I've never been built one of those before in my life. The other thing as well, you can see my little project I have on the go on the side, um, I'm out of filters. Uh, a lot of people ask me about the filters, so what I'm going to show you in a minute, once I've done the review and that's rendering, I'm going to take you out and show you exactly how I make my own filters and the various bits and pieces like that. And this little guy is still waiting for paint. I will get it all painted and everything else. That's why he's sat here for his first coat of the metalizers. Yes, I am going to do it as a little bit of a... Uh, run through um, on sci-fi stuff and metalizers and all different bits and pieces like that that's why i've done that one uh, i am going to be doing quite a bit of sci-fi latter end of the year stuff like that i don't know when that will be released to be honest you're getting this as sneak peeks what i tend to do is i tend to chuck in aircraft behind the scenes you don't necessarily see them straight away and they'll find their way a little bit later that's a classic example of it so i've chucked this thing together because let's face it it's mobis there's only a couple of bits um dunged in together and now he's ready for paint and then we're going to use, uh, obviously, a little bit of a mixture. We're going to come in there with some hand painting of the metal colour stuff, the Leo, AK metalizers, and we're going to weather it as well, because don't forget, being a Cylon radar, very heavily weathered. Um, you know, some of them are completely beaten in, some of them are like brand new. I'm going to make that one weathered. So those questions people are asking me about, how do you weather uh, metal finishes and stuff like that, that's going to be all about it. It's going to be a standalone. It's not going to show the build of it, because as I say, it's only like 10 bits and it's together. Um, but it's going to be literally a full-on how to use metalizers and weather metalizers. But I thought, really, it's an ideal job on that one. So there we go. I'm now going to review this guy. Okay, we'll put the cameras all on, get everything rolling, get that one done. I'll get it edited, and then I'll come back with you at lunchtime, and I'll show you about how I make my homemade filters and all about it. I know a lot of people have asked about that. Okay, so technically, this is your standard filter, okay? They're around about, I don't know, 50 quid for three of them, I think it is, with your delivery and all the rest of it. So this is how they would come. They get nasty, gnarly, and all the rest of it. So what I do, literally, is come along, I'm doing it out here because I don't want to get everywhere, and cut the cardboard bits off the back, okay? So you literally just come along like this, and just slice these guys all off the back. I normally... If you'd use a pair of scissors, I make a far nicer job, but to be honest, I have got a load of these, which we've done already. Okay, and then remove this said bit off. <clears throat> and as you can see by the color, this filter has pretty much had it. Then you can just pull it out. Now there is a couple of staples in here, which you'll wanna 
hold on to it and all the rest of it but you can see the dust coming off this is why i've done it out here it's a horrible job of which i will do later on because i don't want to cover the camera in it generally you'll be left with this okay which is very straightforward and then you buy a roll of this stuff now this is automotive stuff now i got this one from a company called ffp which is foam and fiber products in the uk and i can't remember how much we paid for it now it's a couple of years ago now i think um it's gone up in price i know i paid not much for this at all off of ebay um but it lasts you somewhat of a lifetime so you have a giant bag of technically the same stuff that's in there okay so what it is it's like a giant roll insulated foam. Oh, the weather's horrible today, it's been lovely. And as you can see, I've already cut bits off and all the bits pieces, and then it's just a simple case. Put it down on the ground, using the other one as a template, go round, mark them out, and cut a load out. And I tend to cut out three or four at a time, roll this back up, put it back in the shed, and keep it out of the way. dead simple pile of those instantly done just like that and then all we do take your new one so obviously you want to go with the white side to the front sorry to the rear okay so we use the mesh to stop it being sucked all the way through you just come along poke it up underneath there we go simple okay and there we go so basically I have got three so I've got one in there now and we've got this one and this one done plus I've got another uh, five of these here plus I've probably got enough out there to do another I don't know 40 of these for the same price as one set of filters okay so that is the thing with it um as in i know obviously you're going to get people who are going to say about oh it's not the same stuff and all the rest of it it's don't forget this is a pure extraction unit okay this is not trying to filter it these other ones you see next to this have a uh, carbon filters in there charcoal filters and all the rest of it those ones uh, obviously you know are more designed to catch stuff this is really just trying to stop big bits getting sucked into the fan which is drawing it all out this one goes all out goes up the hose and out the wall there to be honest where we were just out there because that bit I film with that is on the other side of this door okay and there we go so filters I tend to change them when I notice the room is a little bit foggy people often say to me about you know when should I change the filter um, there's no you know right and wrong with it at the end of the day but this morning when I was spraying to be honest I was just looking around thinking bit foggy in here and it shouldn't be you know if you've got your extractor running and you're spraying towards your extractor it should be taking it as fast as you're pushing it at it so from that point of view I knew my filter was getting a little bit clogged a little bit blocked it needed to be sorted out so that's what we did and to be honest I usually have a stack of these as I've got down there now uh, under there okay normally I just then pull one out when you do it just be extremely careful because the dust and stuff is literally just being held on here the paint particles so if you rip at it they're going to go airborne and if you've got your model near here you're going to cover it in dust and dirt and everything else like that okay so just what you want to do is gently remove it pull it out fold it over fold it on itself like an envelope as i do and then i usually put it in a bag and then it gets binned all right uh, but definitely just don't sort of you know rank around because otherwise the dust will go absolutely everywhere but it is cheap, it is quick. As I say, I can't remember exactly how much they are now, but I think it's around about 60 pound for a 10 meter by two meter roll, and that's what I use, okay, and I use in all my filters. And as I say, I've been doing it now for well over a year, 
to be honest, I'll probably go through a filter. Well, you guys probably know more than I do by looking at it. Uh, but every two weeks, I tend to put a new one in. It depends how much spraying I'm doing. If I'm doing loads of little jobs and I'm not doing much in the bay, then uh, obviously it won't be as often as that. But from, you know, if you can see it getting a bit foggy in your room, you shouldn't, you know, you should be pulling everything out, okay? So that's time to change your filter. And if you're doing it this way, it's cheap enough. Just keep them going. And that way it makes things a lot more healthy in your environment. Uh, we've done the review uh, now from the Mitsubishi. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to it. Now I've actually looked at the kit, to be honest, quite a quick kit. <laughs> There's not gonna be much in there. I might try and get hold of a color photo etch set, perhaps for the cockpit, just to liven it up uh, and see what's around as well, just to add to it, a few little bits to it. But it's only my first entry. I've actually got a plan for doing three Yep, that's three builds for this. Uh, that's one of them. That's gonna be my more traditional aircraft. I have got a Gundam kit coming in. Uh, I don't, who was I speaking to? Toby, Mark, Tom, I don't know, one of you, about it. So that's a big one um, uh, coming in. It's a one to 100 scale, master grade one. First time I've ever done anything like that. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And then I've got something else hopefully, uh, that if I've got time to do it, I'm not gonna go on about it yet because I'm not sure I have enough time to do it, but I'd really like to. If not, it'll make its way to normal build anyway, which is very Japanese-y as well. So there we go, that's about it for today. Um, what I'm gonna do this afternoon is gonna get the first coat of paint onto the actual um, Osprey itself. Just be the light color going down on there, then we'll put the other one on top of it. So I'm gonna do the filming work for that one. Uh, and then I'm gonna be going, doing a little bit of filming, obviously, with you guys, your work in the forum, the various bits and pieces like that. Uh, we make our way through and don't forget i know i'm going to go on about it a lot during the last part of the show as well get your group build entries in and get your sick build entries in as well okay we don't want to have last year i think we had loads of people saying oh i missed the end and well technically i know i left, let a few of you in i got in a bit of trouble uh but yeah so let's just make sure they're all done and you get them pushed through and everything else like that so there we go guys that's it for today and i'll catch you all later Okay, so there we go. As I said, with the extractor, the thing like that, you can buy these rolls. Uh, what I would suggest is, obviously, I go through it quite a lot, but if you have got some friends um, in your area, something else like that, you could buy a roll like that. I think they're around about sort of 50 quid uh, for the big ones. You can do smaller sizes, but obviously, the bigger you go, the cheaper it gets overall. And then chop them all up and then share them with your friends and all the rest of it and all sort of chip in to buy and do it like that. It works for a very cost-effective way of doing it instead of buying the smaller filters, because if you're like me, I will go through them and clog them, especially if you're doing bigger jobs um, and a lot of priming, things like that. You can clog a filter quite quickly uh, and then obviously you're in a situation where it's not working effectively and then you're going to start breathing it in. The whole point of these type of extractors like this one is they get everything out of the area. Okay, so when they're coming in and you're doing something like this, you're spraying almost directly into it and then it just takes it clean away. That's how I can get away with not using a mask as much, but trust me, when it's the hot products, everything else like that, then I do wear a mask okay and we work it through but generally it's one of those things as soon as you notice it perhaps a little bit cloudy in the area it's time to change your filter okay so if you just got a pile of them like I've got down there you just bung them in but as you say when it's I think around about 50 quid for three these days it's quite expensive and you tend to put it off and you don't want to be putting it off uh, because uh, obviously that can be very detrimental to your health Anyway, today, obviously, two great reviews for you. This is very much for the Japanese uh, group build that we got starting in the 1st of July. So we've got basically a month before we get going on it. So I've actually reviewed for you the uh, Hasegawa's Mitsubishi F1 148. Yeah, I always call it a Jaguar on steroids. Okay, it's like the beefed up version. It's still a great kit, even though it's showing its age now and the panel lines are a little bit heavy and everything else like that, it is still something really special and it's got some great markings and in the Japanese markings like that, it's absolutely fantastic. This guy has turned up, I've been hinting about it all week as well. This is gonna be my second entry into it and as I said, we are gonna be diversifying into other things uh, and the way we do things here at Flory Models. So I've got this guy in now. This is the Master Grade um, uh, High V uh, Gundam you name it, it's got it. Now, I am by no means an expert, as everyone knows on this, but I do love this type of thing. With me, I'm gonna go completely overboard with it, and I'm gonna weather it to hell, <laughs> and give it nice sort of weathering all the way through it, make it look like it's been in a battle, but generally, big, impressive kit, and everything else like that. It's Bandai quality through and through, so you know me, I absolutely love it. Anyway, now it's time to have a look around your work in the forum.
Okay, welcome to the site. Uh, a couple of things I just want to recap on. First of all, guys are asking about the members' offers and the various things. It's down here. Once you log in, this all opens up for you, okay? So click down here on members' offers, and you will see them all down here and the prices you pay versus everyone else pays, okay? So there's no deal actually on individual sander packs because they're very sort of keenly priced, shall we say. And to be honest, just down below here is the discount code and everything for everything airbrush and things like that to get you a discount. I can't go any lower, otherwise I'm going to be showing it to you. Uh, but that's down there as well. But obviously you've got various things. We're out of stock currently of pigments, uh, but everything else is just in here. So if you want your discount, this is where you get it from. Don't ask for it afterwards because it's really really difficult to do it okay um, the other thing as well obviously today page this is where you keep up with all the current information obviously today's isn't up here but that's where you'll find all the bits and pieces okay down in there all right so that's there and the kit reviews as well they are at the top so make sure you pop over to the top and the big one here is the last review that went up so obviously we got today's review which is you'll click on it uh, we just pause the sound okay and that will come up and give you our full one and then obviously you can go if you wanted to full screen on that you can just hit the full screen button and you can zip through and you'll get some weird guy talking to you about it like that and then just come back down the bottom here and go smaller and that will take you smaller all right same thing obviously applies to the video builds that's how you're going to come over they're not necessarily in order at the moment obviously we've got the current ones that are going on which are these three well these two are done now actually but down here what i am going to do is redo the thumbnail to give you a end image one of the photos from it instead of the box art um, because that's getting confusing as well all right but um generally for some reason it's putting them in here but from now on they will appear on the top okay so when we get going with part one of the uh, the build for the uh, fw190 it will appear down in here but usual thing all you do is click on a thumbnail it opens up you can watch the video is down in here so if we just sit forward so you can either watch it just down in here like this okay and then you've got your video options obviously it's streaming so i've got a good connection down here at 1080 at 50 so it tends to be pretty much pin sharp if you want to again you can go full screen and you can watch it in full screen okay or if you want to you can even go off and watch it in youtube if you want to click it on there and all the bits and pieces just like that okay so very very straightforward of how to do it now over on the forum he says um loads of bits and pieces going on again usual thing today you know this is where all the information that you see on the today page on the main site will appear in here okay so literally just click on it if you've not been over to the main site and then today's news will appear in here and you can do it just like that okay so loads of different bits of information going on there as well as obviously you've got the announcement section and your things like that so we've got to start off with flow flow gotta thank guys i haven't got time to name you all but obviously your names have all been updated down here you guys have been fantastic and donated a lot more than usually the 10 pound that is asked from you to obviously get to flow coming around to where you are so usual thing we've got flow on the go section um we do have to point out that she is on her way to indianapolis for the indianapolis 500 for memorial weekend okay so um i'm gonna pop down here de -de -de. um if we've got any more pictures got a few down here i think from the other day as i say we had flow at nellis which was a lovely little touch there and the uh, bits and pieces flow playing with an f-16 fantastic with the thunderbirds okay so congratulations thank you very much down there tom for making her feel very very happy and i know very very content because she is a girl after my own heart and loves her aircraft and her armor and her bits and pieces like that so i know she would have had a fantastic time down there okay so some of your builds that have caught my eye this week okay we've got tom has done this one and when i first saw it i automatically assumed that this was the um kinetic um uh reboxing type thing of the su 33 c flanker and i that was it and i was thought yeah no it's fantastic brilliant weathering lovely clean photos and all the bits that run with it it was only then when i properly read at this I suddenly realized that no i'm not this is actually if i just go back up to the top this is the one centi second trumpeter kit just shows and this is what i was saying about a scale effect i love the way that the weapons are done uh, and that it's all worn in the same so i just assumed it was the 133 because it's got such a great level of detail 
everything's been taken care of this one to make sure that it has scale presence and that's what I say about it beautifully done nice clean photos as well nice good close-ups and all those areas so that is an absolute stunning build and definitely a firm favorite of mine this week so well done Neil purely because you caught me out totally and I didn't realize what scale it was uh, another brilliant one that actually only went up today uh, I first caught this on Facebook actually um, sorry is uh, Toby has done the Spitfire again this is one of those things scale very hard to judge just off the bat not knowing exactly what it is beautiful clean cliff crisp photos all the way around it's nice to see a clip Spitfire as well so he's done a beautiful job on this particular one loads of photos as you can see very nice. Be nice to see some close up ones, admittedly, but it's very nice having some nice, clean, crisp overall ones just like that. And again, I'm thinking, oh, 32nd? No, this is actually 48th. So again, it's one of those things. It shows exactly how you can do. What I love about this one as well is, and what we we're saying about it, is the build thread. Beautiful build thread on this particular one. And this is what it's all about. So all that background information, the thing about the kit as well, when I first saw it, I assumed that this was actually the um, Eddard uh, 148 Spitfire. It's not, it's actually Airfix's one, okay? So it just goes to show what you can get beautiful job all the images for the stuff that he's actually used on this one and gone right the way through and I say nice clean photos of everything he's got up to and there's your detailed shots okay right the way in showing exactly what you can do with basically you know a limited budget kit you know these kits are quite cheap the photo etch and the various bits you know respective to all other extremely expensive ones um, not too bad nice little touch with a screw self tapping into the nose I've never thought of doing that but after seeing that I'm thinking that's it uh, gonna screw them all in like that because that is a great touch but it just you know it goes to show we we're saying about how it's nice to follow along a build like this right the way through as you can see so he's done a great job on that one uh, another one that took my eye was actually this one here. So this is um, Gerald's one. This is the Raiden Tamiya's 148th kit. But I love the little su uh, subtle chipping on this. As I say, they were always very chippy type aircraft because of the environment they were in. Um, but I say it's got great scale presence on this one. I think if it was on just a piece of paper or mini diorama, something else like that, it would be very hard to judge this one beautifully done some nice little touches down in there but the chipping you know as you say it's very subtle and it works really really nicely so we've done a great job on that one loads of photos as you can see right the way through just like that so if we just have a general scan round of the forum because I've just clicked the wrong button to be honest so in the gallery if we just have a little mini review round down in here Okay, this is a great one from Mark. Uh, Mark's done a stunning job on technically not a brilliant kit. So this is Revels 132nd uh, Corsair. Now, as I say, when I first saw this again, I was thinking this was the Tamiya one and all the rest of it. Beautifully done. I love the multi-tonal chipping right away on this, the general weathering, the wear and tear, the scuffing and everything else on that. And as I say, nice to see some images of exactly how it all goes together. It'd be nice to see more photos on this one, but a really nice build indeed, and that's a great shot. Peter here, he's working on the 148 Tamiya uh, North American. Uh, this is the RAF version. Out of the box, it's facing nice internal shots, overalls, and done a great job on that. Nice job on the paintwork, nice smooth camo uh, right the way through. And as I say, seeing the Mustang in normal RAF colors, an absolute treat. So well done on that one. Will's been working on the 172nd Revel Wellington. This is the Mark II, right the way over it. I know this kit well. <laughs> Funny enough, I got it as a stall project, okay, which was, um, I'm going to get on with that one, thinking about it. It just reminds me very heavily to get on with that one, because uh, as I say, I stripped it all back as a favor for her and uh, forgot about it. But uh, great job on that one, Will, well done. Ruin has been working on the 172nd. This is a special Hobbies VL Mimeski uh, Mark II. Sorry, mutilated that one. I don't know it at all, this one, I must admit. But as I say, it's great to see it in the colours and the uh, Norway markings on this particular one. Is it the Norway markings on it? I assume it is. Um, but as I say, really nice. Something a little bit different. Nice little one down on that one. And as I say, not an easy kit to work with, but a beautiful little one. So it's great to see these kits because, again, it looks like 148 to me. I would never know it's 172nd. 
Okay, something a little bit different on this is the 148 scale Hobby Boss uh, P47 Thunderbolt uh, with the Lethal Princess fictional markings, which really took my eye. Gotta love this one, absolutely fantastic. Nice job on there, nice job on the decal on the nose for the uh, nose art with Princess Leia on there. Beautiful done, a little homage back to uh, Star Wars and with the red tail as well, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. But generally, nice chipping work all over, nice metal finish on that to give it a worn down look uh, onto the metal finish. But as I say, with Princess Leia on there, definitely gets my vote, as you can well imagine. Okay, moving over to armor now. Uh, Chris has been working on the 135th scale Tiger 1 uh, captured in Russian markings. As you can see, nice job on the weathering. Sort of, you know, that more urban dirt and grime and, you know, brick dust and various things like that right the way over this one. Really nice touch, nice clean photos on that one as well. Working right the way through it. Okay, uh, Jim's been working on the Tamiya 135th scale uh, Abrams. This is a straightforward one. I've built this kit as well. Showing its age a little bit now, but he's done an absolute stunning job on that one. Nice weathering right the way over it. Stowage to the brim right the way over. And as you can see, he's done a great job on that one. John's done a great job here. This is the Hobby Boss 135th scale um, GCT 155mm uh, fire support but it's based on the chassis of a T72. So definitely a little bit of a hybrid right the way over, but you can see brilliant job on that one. Lovely weathering. And it has got that classic sort of Russian lower hull weathered look to it and everything else, something a little bit different. Okay, so John's been working on the 135th scale Takam Object 279 uh, Russian heavy tank or Soviet heavy tank I should say Wow very muddy underside that twin bogey track system very reminiscent of sort of armadillo with the uh, sort of pleated armor but with the exposed track heavy duty tank with heavy duty weathering something a little bit different and do you think it floats looks like a bolt hole. Then right the way to the other side of the spectrum, uh, down here we've actually got the Airfix 172nd Cromwell. Little tiny tank, but again, we're talking about scale presence. This is definitely one that I thought was 135th scale before you read it. Okay, beautiful job, lovely little diorama for it. And it just goes to show that the old 72nd scale kits can actually be made into something rather very special. Okay, Keith's been working on the 132nd Airfix World War One B-Type bus, old bill. Okay, Walter's been busy working on the Mobius uh, 132nd Battlestar Galactica Cylon Radar, which I know well because I'm working on it as well. Beautiful job on this one. He's put the uh, LED lighting kit set into this one. So we've actually got full moving, working uh, lighting display on it. Nicely weathered as well. I'm sort of going to be doing a, a special on uh, metal finishes using this guy. That's why I've got mine all primed up now. But he's done an absolute stellar job on this one. And with the LED lighting, and he goes on to say about obviously putting the lighting, test rigging it, and everything else like that. So he did a great job on that one.
Okay, Paul's been working on the 172nd fine mold X-Wing, red six. Okay, and last up, we've got Barry. Barry's been working on a 200 millimeter uh, Mitchell's uh, military models with Greek hot light. Okay guys, so there we go, that's this week round the forum. Just remember, down here in the group build area, right down in here, let's get these guys going. So obviously, literally, if you're watching this, probably Sunday, you might be a little bit late, but that's make sure you get your entries in as much as you can. We've got 33, but only 18 finished. So a little bit of a low turnout on that one. So if you have got something that's getting close to being finished, let's get them to go, get them done, okay? So literally, you've got till Sunday night on that one. So you've got another day if you're watching this at some point, or you might be a little bit too late if you're watching this next week. Don't forget, your builds will all be placed back into the World War One section of the actual uh, build work in progress and then obviously they'll make their way down the bottom to the archive here for the gallery for all the completed ones don't forget the seeing double one uh, we haven't got much time left on that one so you've got 22nd of june so you've got a couple more weeks left on that one again we're going to push through because you've got 54 10 completed group build you've got 19th of june so these are all getting to very much near the end and everything else like that so let's get those going again we've got 278 potentially uh, we've got 109 finished so we've got a great turnout on this one but let's get through as many as we possibly can okay and not forgetting down here big in japan obviously you've been speaking about it a minute ago that one is starting out you can actually put what you're going to be doing down here down here in the chat area the rest of it will be unlocked but you've got the rules the banners the bits and pieces and the official entry so basically down in here post down what you're going to be doing okay the guys can get an idea you know you can either do things then with other members who are building the same as you or you might think well there's one there i'm going to do something different but we've got a massive selection of all the different down there we've got the old gundam stuff which personally i've got one as well that's going to be going down down here in the next couple of months uh, lots of bikes lots of cars obviously it's all Japanese related stuff so you've got a huge scope including these guys fantastic so as I said it should be a really big open group build for anything so you can do your classic stuff your sort of World War two right the way up to brand new modern including the sort of stuff that you don't normally see like down in here as well as the normal stuff as well okay so as i said got a great scope for all of these things as you make your way through uh the actual next six months doing these great japanese group build so that's it from me back to the studio Great work as ever guys, some fantastic stuff. So just make sure you get going with the group builds uh, and with the SIGs to get them completed on time because obviously you don't want anybody being disappointed at the end of them. Also, when you're doing the gallery, please link in your build because I love to show you like that to just be able to click on it and then I can show people your builds. Otherwise you have to go around looking for them. But if you've got them in there and also from a member's point of view, you can see exactly what you want to and think, right, that's a great model. Love to know he did that particular technique or something. You can just click straight on the gallery and go straight to your actual build. So it is really helpful. All you've got to do, copy and paste the address link into your actual final reveal uh, in your listings of how you did it and all the bits and pieces like that. But it is really helpful, not only for me looking around, but I know the other members. So generally I've been working, as you can imagine, on this guy. Really want to get this one second coat of paint on it over the weekend uh, and everything else like that. Then we can start the weathering process, get the decals on, bit more weather in and really go to town, but very much enjoying that build. Now all week during the vloggy bits, you've been knowing I've been hinting at a sci-fi project that we've got coming in. Um, and I've had people guessing and I you know and keep the guesses coming no i'm not anyway it did arrive and it is here and everything else like that but what i'm going to do is i'm going to build with you something which is a, a very iconic um prop movie prop because this is another site in the modeling um spoke about it this morning which i uh, want to get onto and expand into so anyway i've been playing with this and generally got it together and everything else and i'm going to show you how to make your own one so this is you guessed it, 
the Aliens Pulse Rifle. Now this thing, I've been after one of these for absolute ages, but I'm gonna show you how to build your own one uh, and everything else like that in a few weeks time. So generally, I must admit, very excited about this guy. Been after one of these for absolute ages and uh, very impressed with it. But I'm gonna show you how you can build your one for around about 150 quid, uh, maybe a little bit more with the LEDs and everything else in there, but generally one of these. So anyway, that's the hint over for it. I know I'm gonna get bombarded by 100 questions for it now and all the rest of it, but you're gonna to have to wait, okay? Because I need all the other bits and pieces to come in before we get going with it. It's gonna take a bit of time, and obviously I've got projects galore coming out, like the FW190, which the first part of that will be up with you on Monday. Now, Monday here in the UK, as I know most of the world, is gonna be a bank holiday, so I don't know if there'll be a vlog, but certainly part one of the actual FW190 showing you the cockpit uh, build and everything else like that will be up with you then. So there we go, have a great long weekend. Get some loads of modeling done uh, and hopefully the sun is going to shine here in the UK although probably not because it's a bank holiday so don't get stuck in traffic and all the other nightmares that go with it so until Tuesday properly have a lovely weekend and I'll catch you all later